Welcome to Rod's Tabletop Hoops and the wonderful world of computer basketball by Wayne Wisco. This is the third part of our boxed games series of boxed vintage tabletop basketball games. And this computer basketball was created around 1970 or 1971 by Wayne Wisco um, by looking at some of his literature. You can tell that he has uh, either been in Winona, Minnesota, or he's been, uh, as you can see on the game box, uh, let's see where he was, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So he's a Midwesterner, and he was going to college when he created this game. So he was quite a young man when he created computer basketball. And I wouldn't say that computers were much of a big thing back then, but I'm guessing he had a pretty good mathematical vision when it came to this game. Uh, computer basketball uh, is one of the early settlers on the computer gaming circuit. Um, he created seasons uh, for 1970, 71, 71, 72, and 72, 73 NBA. And uh, they, are, they are fun cards. There's a, also an additional set down here, some all-time teams as well. But he had a three-year run, and it probably means he had a 71-72 edition, a 72-73 edition, and a 73-74 edition. So if you're a fan of those seasons, uh, you know that the Knicks and the Lakers met in the finals two of those three years. This would probably be your type of game. The game uh, plays relatively simple. We'll get into that. Uh, there's not a lot of complexities. It's, it's uh, an era before the uh, steals and block shots and individual turnovers were kept. So it's based on some defensive ratings. So teams, individual players are rated uh, on a one to four basis uh, based on their defense. Uh, one being the best, four being the worst. And we will get into that as well. Uh, let's take a look at some of the early vintage literature uh, Wayne created. Here's a fancy brochure right here. It's all in red. It blends in with the color of the game box and the game board. And it basically just says, Dear Fan, the Computer Sports Game Company, CSG. CSG. Here's some, here's some random 1 to 25 number cards. Here's number one. That's, that was his logo, the CSG logo right there. <laughs> Takes great pride in introducing its entirely new computer basketball game. This game is designed to recreate the action and excitement of NBA courts from Boston to Los Angeles with you, the fan, in mind. When you play computer basketball, your skill as a manager it is important in determining the quote-unquote breaks of the game and its eventual outcome because you control the strategy and the substitutions. And you can see toward the bottom of the page, there's the printed signature of Wayne Wisco of Computer Sports Game Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's a, just a tremendous, you know, he had a little flair for writing there. I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing he came up with this spiel, but it really would sell a lot of young fans on the game of basketball. It's fantastic clip art as well. And you ask, computer basketball sounds interesting. How is it played? So it just goes into its whole spiel about uh, its uh, uh, setup takes a little time. You simply place the four team cards on the places marked for them on the game board, pick the starting lineups, and write them down on the score sheets that are provided. The play of each team is initiated by the shake of dice, which refer to the team cards and the strategy, if any, employed by the team's coach, either you or your opponent. The results will tell you which player takes a shot and his location on the court, or if there is a turnover or foul on the play. A shake of the dice then refers to the individual player's card and determine whether the shot was made or missed and indicates whether there was a foul in the act of shooting. Rebounds following missed shots will also occur realistically with a team's leading rebounder usually out-rebounding a weaker opponent. Defense comes into play in the initial shake with a good defensive player committing fewer fouls, forcing more turnovers, and allowing his opponent fewer inside high percentage shots than will 
a weaker defensive player. So it just goes on and on, uh, putting it on the table. We'll get into this a little bit, but here's the uh, little diagram. There's four dice, time marker, the, the draw cards of 25. That's these little guys right here. Those are used uh, primarily for free throw shooting. But you have a, a time clock and everything. And you're probably asking me, where is that time clock? Well, let's just take a good, good look at this all-encompassing game board. Boom. There you have it. There's a rebound chart, and I'll bring this in close so you can actually see what the rebound chart's all about. A, a missed shot goes up, and basically you have four dice, and in, on a rebound you only need three of those four. So two dice will be used to roll the 2 to 12 result here, and the other dice refers to the column right there. So, you know, a rebound could go defensive center, add seven to his rebound rating, uh, or if the if the offensive center still grabs the rebound, he is open for a D shot. There's an A shot, a B shot, a C shot, and a D shot in computer basketball. And the A and the B shot is uh, refers to an inside and outside shot that is guarded. And the C and the D shots are inside and outside shots, or outside and inside shots that are... No, A and B are shots that are unguarded c and d are shots that are heavily guarded so i haven't played this in a little while so i was just a little rusty on those those numbers but we'll go over that when we look at the cool instruction booklet later on uh, the other parts of the board are a center spot a forward spot and a guard spot here and these are all defensive uh checks there's a certain role when on the possession of the ball and if you you uh you know say we'll just for instance, Walt Frazier has the ball, and it's the role is for a defensive player to guard Frazier. And we'll go to Jerry West's card and check out that Jerry has a defensive rating of one, which he typically is. It's the best, or Gail Gooder to two, depending on whoever's guarding Frazier. And you refer to this thing and utilize the draw pile and uh, draw one to 25. You can see what will happen, whether it's a steal, a foul, forcing a travel, pass out of bounds, violations, all kinds of unique game results can occur on the defensive end but any anyway i was going to clarify this one portion of the the um defensive play here's your rules for computer basketball they're very well typed out and and very easy to read shows your equipment shows the setup and uh you know what I might do? I might just take a break right now and give me a second to set up the game. All right, here's the game setup. I have just at random picked a couple of the most competitive teams of the early 1970s. That includes the Los Angeles Lakers of 1972, a 72-win team, one of the 68-win, 69-13 win team, and the New York Knicks of 1972, who ended up facing them in the NBA Finals. Of course, the Knicks came back and got their revenge in 1972-73 and beat the Lakers. But anyway, these are Hall of Fame lineups. I can count the Hall of Famers West. Frazier, Busher, Reed, Chamberlain. The only people that aren't Hall of Famers here are Jim McMillan and Happy Harriston. Those guys are fine players in their own right. But anyway, if we were going to play a game, I was going to go over those uh, each card, as I mentioned. They have an A, B, C, and D column. And I want to verify this. Under equipment, I should just be reading the instructions direct. Uh, each card contains four columns, A, B, C, and D. These refer to the player's position on the court during a field goal attempt. A is outside unguarded. B is inside unguarded. C is outside closely guarded. And D is inside closely guarded. The reason I don't remember those a lot of the times is because when you roll the dice, you are going to get A, B, C, or D, and I just roll the dice again and see what happens. But it is nice to know that an A is an open shot from outside 
A B is an inside shot that's unguarded. C and D can be remembered as the closely guarded outside and inside shots. So anyway, and it also says score sheets are also provided for easy record keeping. Let me show you a copy of those old school score sheets. I got a copy of these score sheets. Um, what also came with mine was a big, thick pad of score sheets, which I don't think I'd ever use entirely because I used my own score sheet, but it was an incredibly huge pad. One second. This was just too big to not show off. That is what the original, that's what these score sheets I got mailed in addition to these score sheets here. So you kind of got the, the short form here. But if you want to get more into detail with your stats, this one only carries the field goals, free throws, and fouls for simplicity. That's form A. This is known as form B, like your tax forms, right? Can't wait to do those. But uh, minutes, field goal attempts made, free throw attempts made, rebounds, fouls, and assists. So it's got a, everything that was pretty much kept all the way up through 73. They didn't have block shots or steals as of yet. And this is a big pad, just to let you know. That'll keep you busy for a while. But anyway, um, the game setup is also, you know, talking about the defense. One's excellent to four is poor. Let's take a look at these 72 Lakers. They are anchored in the middle by Wilt is still Chamberlain, obviously. And Wilt has a 45 on rebounds, and that's a rating that Wayne calculated based on how many rebounds he gets per minute. It's played probably one of the highest in the league. So if you have a good rebounding center like Wilt, you're generally going to be tough to beat. Willis Reed, his counterpart, has a 27 on rebounds. But you can also see a couple different, if you compare these two cards as well, Reed didn't have a fabulous year. He was still battling his knee, knee problems. Matter of fact, he only played 363 minutes that year. He was injured almost the entire year, forcing the Knicks to go with Jerry Lucas. But Reed, um, his shooting, it says 377. That's not his field goal percentage. That's the number of, number of shots he takes in relation to other players. So the higher the shooting rating, the more times he will get the ball. Whereas you got a guy like Wilt Chamberlain by the final two seasons of his career, Wilt was literally taking six, seven, or eight field goal attempts per game, and he played virtually the whole game. You can see 3,469 minutes, divide that by 82 games. That's a lot of minutes, probably 42 minutes a game. And uh, so even though he made 65% from the floor, he just doesn't get the ball. The Lakers had plenty of players. For instance, if Wilt's shooting is a 220, Jerry West, who averaged 25.8 on the season. The cards have stats. They're kind of cool. One of the finest features of the cards. And West is rated a 2 at guard. I was surprised he wasn't rated a 1, even though he was an older guard at this time. But obviously, that was at the discretion of Wayne. Guys like West and Baylor will just be key cogs for the Lakers consistently. So, anyway, uh, the Knicks obviously have some defense of their own. They gave uh, Walt. Wayne gave Walt Frazier a one. He gave Willis Reed a one on defense to Busher a one on defense. Bradley a two. And Earl Monroe got a three on defense. And he was a little bit lax, or maybe uh, he, he had an injury prone year as well. Wayne could have factored that in, or maybe he just isn't up to snuff defensively uh, based on his past knee tr troubles or, or whatever. So anyway, um, these are the offense, team offense and team defensive cards. And um, Wayne put together, say, here's a regular offensive card for the Los Angeles Lakers. And there's numbers like uh, columns and rows once again. And when you play a, a possession of offense, you're either going to use an offensive card, um, numbers two through six. Oh, this is visitors. Oh, it's supposed to be for visitors defense. That goes down here. The Lakers are the visitors. So here's the defensive card. See the slot? Visitors defense. And there you have it. The 
8 through 12 on the two dice roll for in red, 2 through 12 dice roll in white. So, for instance, let's just do a possession. There's a jump ball chart, and it's pretty darn special as well. It's just based on height, but it's pretty unique and, and fair. And it's right here. You can see the difference in height is the way that the ball, you know, the jump ball was determined. So you have Wilt Chamberlain versus Willis Reed, and it has a height of seven foot one for Wilt, a height of six eleven for Willis Reed, and that'll mean basically two inches. So if you're two to three inches, the two to seven will go with the team with the taller jumper. Eight to twelve will go with the team with the shorter jumper. So, um, so we roll the two dice. And we get a two to seven, and Wilt Chamberlain gets the tap. So let's just say Wilt got the ball. You grab all four of the dice, and this is a purely dice activated game. So you're going to roll all four of these together. And so we're going to look at six. And um, the Lakers have the ball, so there's their offense right here. And a six and an eight. So you can go down column six, row number eight, right guard C column. So I position the players on the court, right guard, left guard. So right guard is Jerry West, the C column, which we all have memorized right now. There is a quiz at the end of this video. C is outside closely guarded. So Jerry is going to get a chance with the C column. And you can take a look at this column and compared to its counterpart, the A column, inside the um, guarded outside column. There's a lot more fugles on the A. We get the C, which has a few more misses, but there's a couple chances here. Let's roll the dice and find out. There's a two, and that's a miss. So if you miss the shot, um, that counts, I believe, as two roster, uh, two clock moves. And the, the interesting thing about this game is you're kind of moving the clock after the play develops. It's, if it's a steal, it's just one clock move. It's a turnover, one clock move. You have different uh, ways to determine that. So Either way, I was going to go and use the rebound chart here. And the rebound chart is over there, and I'll bring it into play. So we're going to use uh, one die for numbers 1 through 6 on the top, and then a 2 through 12. So let's see what happens here. So it's a 2, 7. 2, 7. Defensive left forward rebounds. So. The possession of the game goes to the New York Knicks. The Knicks will come down, and you run the offense again right through the dice. And I roll a 6-5. So the Knicks offense is a 6, and a 5 is the left forward D shot. So left forward on this team is Bill Bradley. The D shot is closely guarded. And that is going to be inside closely guarded. So Bradley, not a great inside player. You'll see a few misses on the card. We roll the dice, and we get an 11. And that's a miss. So we go right back to our 2 to 1 ratio on the, the, the rebound chart. And I will go 3, 5. The rebound is defensive right forward plus 5. So... I've got DeBusher matched up against Harrison. Harrison has a rating of 38 to Busher 30, and they already give Harrison five more points. So 43-30. Lakers grab the rebound. They come down on offense, and here they go. Well, look at what we got there. We got a uh, 12. A 12 is on the defensive card of the New York Knicks, 8, eight through 12. And then we got an 8. That is center, A column. And as we all have memorized, the A uh, is outside unguarded. So the center gets an A outside unguarded shot. That's kind of interesting. And that is Wilt Chamberlain. So Wilt's going to go up, get a 7, and he'll miss. So let's grab some rebounds. It's just it's kind of like that. Yeah, it's a two shot. I already moved that. So we already had three shots. We've already played a roughly a minute of play. So the rebound off the Wilt miss would be a six and a five. Defensive center plus three. Well, look at this. Chamberlain's a 45. Reed 
is a 27. So what happens right there is that Will Chamberlain has grabbed an offensive rebound easily because it's just plus three. It's 45 to 30. And if you look in the rebound chart, rebounding over here, if I get a rebound, uh, an offensive rebound, the offensive player's rebounding is still higher. He receives the rebound and may shoot the ball back up from the position indicated in parentheses. So, um, based on that last rebounding roll, it was a 6-5. It says D right next to the position. He did not get the rebound, so Wilt will get the chance to put the ball up from the D spot. D inside, closely guarded. But this is a little more Wilt-like. Wilt he at least knows how to bust his moves down low. So let's see the D shot will be a 9. Field goal, assist left guard. So it's automatic field goal for Wilt. Assist left guard, you know, move the, move the clock as needed. I might be doing that timing a little bit off. I was trying to remember if if the time goes to, but that's a field goal and assist to Gail Goodrich. But these these instructions are extremely easy to read. Ending the period, fouls and penalties, assists, free throws. It talks about everything, substitutions. I was just looking for time. Time. The time marker must be moved on each play according to the following instructions. Every time a regular offensive play is run, move the time marker two spaces or 20 seconds. Every time a fast break is run, move the time marker one space or 10 seconds. The exceptions to these directions are as follows. Every time there is a turnover or a foul on the court on either of the team cards or the defensive cards, Move the clock one space. Each time a regular offensive play results in a turnover or court foul, the clock only moves one space. So uh, each time a fast break results in a turnover, do not move the time marker. One additional exception is made regarding the press defense. Um, when an offensive player rebounds and puts the ball back up without setting up another play, you do not move the time marker. So that was what I that was what my question was. So let's just put this right back around eleven o'clock. But once again. You're kind of making the changes on the time uh, as the play develop, after the play develops. So it's a little bit unique. I'm almost in favor of changing that up if I do a little work around, uh, maybe just doing a number of shots per game because it, doing the time after the play is over is a little bit uh, uh, counterintuitive. But at the same time, that's a way new and, and it works out well. The game works out well. So anyway, that's how a little brief portion of gameplay works. Uh, you play that till the clock is done. The, you play the four quarters and then you hope to see if your favorite team won or if you just want to see a competitive game or you can play a replay a championship series as great as this one. So, and as I said, Wayne came out with a 70-71 season, the 71-72 and the 72-73. He actually had a reboot of the game uh, in uh, 2020 or 2019, late 20, early 2020, and I got in touch with him, and he said he was he has a uh, had a daughter that actually r ran a print shop, and so he actually printed out additional copies of the game, roughly a hundred uh, run of about a hundred uh, sets of the game, and he has finally, uh, after a year and a half uh, through COVID and everything, sold out his uh, final games for whatever, whatever I've known, but I've also heard in the wings there may be a 50th anniversary. Edition, but don't quote me on that. Wayne's a, a great guy. If he has the time, he will definitely go to town with something of that nature because this game is so easy and so simple. But uh, anyway, what I was going to talk about, I was going to go and show you a couple of their other little uh, ordering charts way back in the day. Uh, this is for the 72 73 season. You can get, if you order before November 15th, you could get the, the entire 17 teams of 72 73. For four dollars and four cents for the set, you can get old time A and old B for a dollar ninety a set, and then time teams for let's let's just take a look at those. Wayne had a couple of old time teams 
And uh, as I mentioned earlier, in a minute ago, we got the old time set team A and B, but I'm not sure if that is the same as the old time team roster. He may have just combined them over time. And they include this 1970 New York Knicks, the 69 Baltimore Bullets, the 68 Hawks, the 67 76ers, who were tremendous, 65 Celtics, 63 Lakers, 62. They're actually the Philadelphia Warriors, not the Philadelphia 76ers. One of the few errors that I found on his cards in this in his game. The 60 Celtics, 58 Hawks, and the 55 Syracuse Nats. So that's quite a span from 55 to 70. In the 50s, teams were shooting still in the 30s as far as, far as field goal percentage. By 1970, they were shooting in the early 40s. So that might just have an impact on the game as well. But each se season would come out uh, for, for Wayne with a different computer basketball roster. That's the 71-72 roster, 70-71 season. His is an initial release, 72-73 roster, 73-74, 72-73 season rosters as well. So three very solid seasons. If you're a fan of the Knicks or the Lakers or the Bucks, the Celtics, there were some really competitive teams there. Or if you just want to see if your hometown team, whether it's the Kansas City Kings or my Portland Trail Blazers, can upset somebody, that's what you uh, go and try and do. So anyway, that's how that, this game goes. The game also, uh, initially, just a little forward thinking, because when you play a season, say you get the 71-72 edition, it's truly not updated with trades. You could certainly trade players if you wanted to. But uh, Wayne came out with his own 20 nameless player cards and first i thought these were these were going to be just blank cards but that's totally not the case he got some randomized cards to like say here's a player that might represent a rookie uh or a a player that's uh been traded or a player that didn't play the prior year for any particular reason and you can try and fit an average shooting player average rebounding player that might have hit about 41 percent from the field and 68% from the line. You can have some cards that are pre-computer program. Let's just say that computer basketball program by Wayne. So you can actually not have to try and make your own cards because it's obvious that this formula is not just your run-of-the-mill formula. You don't just have uh, random ranges of numbers. These are cards that are custom made and Wayne did a fantastic job with each one of these little typeface font. And when he made his re-release, a couple of years back, they all have the similar, similar font, but he actually changed it, got rid of the game box and has a folding tent for a lot of these charts, which, which is actually a little bit easier on the tabletop as well. But this is classic. You can't, you can't go wrong with a game that looks like this. I was also going to take another minute just to do a couple workarounds because I, I played this game initially and I loved the flow, um, the, the 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 dice rolling is extremely intuitive and simple. Uh, clock management, while it's a little bit, uh, you know, moving the clock after the play was still simple to figure out because you knew there was two moves for a shot uh, on a possession and one move for turnovers, rebound shots, and steals. And you could run a fast break whenever you wanted. But I did my own workarounds. I was. Um, there's a particular play that did not occur in this little uh, demo. Let me just say, if I if I rolled a seven with this dice right here, see this column that's right in between the two sets of orange cards. Now that column refers to um, using a defensive play call. And so, say I rolled this, and say the Lakers have the ball. Well, I rolled a two, and that says the center. Now. Center refer to Wilt, but the seven refers to this column. It's a defensive play card. So you're going to have to use his defender is Willis Reed. Willis Reed is rated a center one, which is a great defensive play call. So in lieu of using Wilt's card for offense, you go to the center slot on the defensive board over here. And this is always where it got exciting. You have a one through 25 range here for center one, which is Wilt Chamberlain. Center two, center three, center four. So you pick one of the random cards from the draw pile, say it's this one, and it's a 21. So you go look it up on 21, and it's stepped out of bounds violation. So it's a turnover for Big Willis Reed. 
and the Lakers take over possession. Well, I'd like to show you uh, in a minute just what I do. I did a little modification to these boards because these cards are a 1 through 25 situation. And I expanded it uh, through a little workaround to 1 to 50. And I wanted to show you that. And we'll take a quick break. All right, you may not be able to see it right up close, but I was going to take a quick look and show you some modifications to those defensive charts. As you can see, as you come over here, I've made a, my own center, guard, and forward defensive charts. And instead of going 1 to 25, they all go 1 to 50. And these boards, for instance, this guard board, includes entries for goaltending. On, on, I'm looking at the three right now. There's offensive foul, shot A, shot B. I try to keep the percentages the same as the prior boards, but it also gives opportunities for block shots and various items that are not present in Wayne Wisco's game, but that doesn't take away from the greatness of the game. But anyway, I decided to spice it up a little bit and i also added instead of just having the defensive column on seven i say if you roll an eight and a seven that gives more defensive play defense makes a little more presence in the game so i did a little bit of that uh, another uh, player on the tabletop basketball board games uh, group that we're in came up with his own rebound chart he found that the original rebound chart over here might be giving a little too much favoritism to the offensive glass so on occasion, I will use this defensive rebound chart. And so that's the flexibility and fun that you can have with these uh, basketball simulations, especially ones that are a little bit older. Anyway, I wanted to show you what kind of workarounds are capable if you really wanted to um, change up the game just a little bit. But either way, I must say in its original form, the game is fun. It plays well. It plays simply. That is one of the greatest things. And, and Wayne Wisco did not, uh, you know, fall short. He's got all of these, these team offensive and defensive cards for every, these are the greatest teams, his old time teams, 70, 71, 72, and 73 seasons there. Every single team, 10 players per team, everybody rated for defense with some cool stats on the back and the bottom of the cards. It is truly a game to cherish and enjoy. Um, if Wayne comes through with a, a 50th anniversary one, that'll just be a treat for everyone. Um, uh, even just redoing the same teams that he has, he came up with when he was a, a college kid. What a, what a genius game. These are just uh, rare opportunities to uh, experience these. I'm very happy that I came across this game. And of course, who doesn't have the amazing game box? They don't, he doesn't issue the new game boxes anymore, but. I wish he would. You know, it's just one of those amazing things. I, I find. Uh, but anyway, here's a little ending tribute. There's, there's the. Uh, I made my own cutout of the jump ball chart. I find that this jump ball chart works for multiple games. I use it for PTG basketball, hoops, tabletop pro basketball. It really works really well all around. There's the rebound chart. There's a comparison with some other cards that I have. Uh, let's see. Uh, rebounding chart. Some other changes. There's a whole bunch of the cards. There's my homemade cards. I also use various dice when I use the 50. Let me put this back for a second. For free throws, a lot of the players are rated 1 through 20. And so you can use these cards and flip. You know, 21, that'd be a missed free throw. 12, that'd be a make. But some people use the red, white, and blue dice and just go right off the percentage that's right on the card. So you say roll these, red, white, and blue is 692. So a Walt Frazier, who's an 808 foul shooter, makes that free throw. Also for my defensive plays where it goes all the way one to 50 like the guard four who's a terrible defender i roll this 
And that's taking a while to stop. I usually have a little dice rolling tray, but say that's a seven. A seven would be an offensive foul. So the guard four makes a rare defensive stop. And I kind of rated the my defense at the at the guard four slot at 50% defensive field goal percentage, which isn't very good. Guard three at 48%, guard two at 44%, and guard one at 38%. So definitely the better the guard guard is defensively, forward and center, the more steals, blocks, less fouls, the same concepts Wayne went through. But uh, anyway, this is a tremendous game. I just, uh, once again, have uh, been pleased to come across a great game like this. And I was pleased to get every single team that was ever created. And there's a picture of a lot of the boxed items that I've shown you already. A Jerry West from 72. A tribute card. Uh, Wayne Wisco came out with an Elgin Baylor tribute card. Because he did not issue a well, Elgin in 1972. Elgin passed away a year or so ago, a year and a half ago. Came up with the El Elgin card. There's a, a ton of teams you get. The Wilt Chamberlain of 1962 with the Philadelphia Warriors. And the Russell of the 1960 Celtics as well. But anyway, this has been a review of the 1971, 72, 73 uh, seasons of computer basketball by Wayne Wisco. I thank you for watching this. This game is just a classic, one of the best. Pick up the dice and roll them and play the game. If you want to do some explorative game, some workarounds, you can do that. But on its own, uh, Wayne Wisco's computer basketball is certainly a treat. And I've had a pleasure to uh, play many games with this. And it's uh, a big part of my library of games. Anyway, thanks for watching Rod's Tabletop Hoops. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a pleasant day.